Welcome. I'm Dan Watson. Hi, I'm Arnold for UV. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the dirt. Yeah, um... boy. We got a new co-host in again this week. Slogs Slogs is uh well he's he's gone on Feet Finder. Have you heard about Feet Finder? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got con- contacted about that as well. Like oh, he's got such a following now. He's got such a oh. following. He's off this week. Just through that, he's recording some celebrity baking series. I don't know what he's up to, but yeah, okay. he's up to that. <laughs> so thank you very much, Arno. Uh, the champ again is in the house. We've got another champ in the house um, stepping up uh, for, for slogs. So thank you very much for that. Um, this week's guest, I'm going to hand over to you, dude, because you definitely know him way, way, way better than me, uh, even though I've known him for donkey's years. <laughs> <laughs> But take it away. Who have we got this week? So um, tonight we've got a very special guy. He's one of the OGs in mountain boarding as well by now. Um, and I am very happy to call him my best friend. Um, please welcome Nikki Heerse from uh, the Netherlands. Oh, we got a name. <laughs> oh, 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 Nikki G. Uh oh, he dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Good. It was just, there was just a couple of moments there where just your name came up on screen and nothing else and we're like ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm still here. Thank you, brother, for for joining us this uh this episode. Um you've obviously I say obviously you may not have seen the BFC episode or heard the BFC episode. Nikki um goes back way back with them boys and stepped in uh for for their episode there um but tonight it's only right that he gets his own episode um because he's been around the block and back a few times um there's been talk on other other podcasts i don't want to name them (coughs) role situation about the uh the prolapse as such maybe we'll come on to that uh as such in a little while's time um but yeah, not wanting to steal their thunder. Um, but yeah, take thank you for for joining us um, and take us back on a little bit about your in, intro into mountain boarding. How how did you how did you come across this sport? Because you're, you're you're Netherlands, are you not? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm from Holland, which basically means hollow land. Uh, we don't have any mountains where where I live, but I like skateboarding ever since I was super super young. I remember getting into like the cheapest skateboards like okay this is what i want to do then i got into snowboarding which i loved and i lived super close to it's an old garbage patch that they filled up with dirt and it became these lush green hills so one day i was mountain biking there and i was like there should be a board they could ride on top of this and somehow one of my neighbors, a little kid, was on a computer and he was showing me something. And it was the MBS website. He's like, yeah, yeah, these are mountain boards and this is like, it looked cool. But being, what was I, 15 back then? And of course, being super happy, super excited to try that out. My mom was like, well, you're going to have to save up some money to try that. And there's no other riders around. So I, I remember saved up 155 euros went to a kite shop and bought a scrub lion canyon to <laughs> it was the green one <laughs> yeah how old were you at this point so 15, so 15. that's yeah, a small ball for a 15 year old <laughs> <laughs> oh god and i wrote that thing everywhere i remember it was super super slow like i don't think the bearings were that right or the, the hubs were that right the wheels might have been like too wide but I wrote it everywhere, everywhere. And I guess I just went on and wrote every Sunday, either in the woods, they're like, we've got dunes close by, so they're not really big mountainous woods, but I'd go there. I made this small wooden ramp. I used it for skateboarding before. I was like, okay, I want it for this mountain board. Made the small wooden ramp and I put it on the back of my bike. And I'd ride to the woods every Sunday. Just to try to do a 360, to try 180s, every, anything. 
um that's basically how i started and that was like the first year or so i just did that i tried to ride a little bit of skate parks ride that wooden ramp take it everywhere and i was super super i said focused on getting sponsored i don't know what that thing was when you're that young you look up at skateboarding you see all these big names and everybody's sponsoring you're like i want to be sponsored i really want to be sponsored um so what I did was I made a, a sponsor tape and sent it out to this guy in the south of Holland who was also riding, who we, who we found online. And by doing that, I somehow got myself into like a, a Dutch mountain board team and upgraded myself into a, what was it? I think it was an MBS Comp 16. So then I finally went off the skate trucks into like normal matrix trucks. Yeah, and that's basically where the where the so fun. That have been like the first the first generation, I suppose, of the J no was it the lady J Lee or the, the what the Leon Robbins one was that? Uh, before the Leon Robbins. Yeah, you had the lightning uh, one first. Blue one. Yeah, yeah. The, the Jason Lee. Uh, that is that must, have, that must have been like the third generation of the Jason Lee one, though. So I don't think. Um, because we have a, anymore, but yeah, did, did you did you have a rubber top or not? No, I, I had the full cap construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, the first two generations still had like a, a rubber finish at on the top on the um, RCC construction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> did they um? That must have been like night and day going from a Lion Canyon to. Yeah. To that, I mean, it was it was wild. The thing was though, in the meantime, while I'm making that, that video, I found out that th there was this Belgian team, and super. What were they called again? Uh, team then, Right On. <laughs> no, not Right On. Was it was it not? Yeah, right? right On. Yeah, no, we were Team Right On, and then our little own local rider group was called the Herbal Riders. But Herbal riders, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the one I'm looking for. <laughs> I saw online that that was this crew, and I don't know why, but I found out they were doing a demo in Schäfeninger, which is about like an hour, <laughs> an hour and a half from here. Back then, I was still riding that Lion Canyon, and I rocked yeah. up, not knowing anybody, with a buddy, and just saw this guy on your screen. Writing a demo together with, I think it was Stein, it was Rudy. Yeah, and Steven. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember, like, it was the sketchiest setup ever because it was two roll-ins on top of each other, and yep. the second roll-in had a small section that was vert, so you would always overshoot it, so you really had to, like, have a special way of pumping it. And you came up with a Lion Canyon with which still had bushings, but it didn't do much. Uh, <laughs> I threw the board. I think that was yeah. the difficult part. So they told me, okay, we don't want you to drop in from this thing because Hilda, like a, a girl that was riding, did it, I think, a week before. And she got mm -hmm. caught on the, the top part and fell down all the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, know, you had like uh, the post bindings with like the long screws that were sticking out. That was also a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, then, when, rather than rather than tightening the, the the nuts either side, just screwed straight down from the top on the post straight through. <laughs> of course, <laughs> if there, if, I tell you what, if ever you buy one of those old post boards on any selling site around the world, I guarantee you that has happened to every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> I even went so far that like on my flyer, I just cut down the bolt. Instead of, <laughs> and then years later realized like, oh, I should have done that. <laughs> but so, awesome. I, I've I've got Daywoon songs like front truck in my mind now. You yeah. saying about the it was, bushing? It was like that. It was like that. <laughs> and so he, he he wasn't allowed to drop in, but he was still allowed to drop in from the landing ramp. And instead of taking like the landing, he was just like spinning 360s from axle stall to flat. 
I, That's I was how we remember it. The, the yeah. And, uh, and I was trying to get the speed to go from flat onto the jump, but I was never <laughs> made. I used to get up there. And mind you, back then it was just Velcro by me. So for anybody that doesn't know the Scrub Lane Canyon, they were just these really sketchy Velcro bindings. Like this. No grip at all. <laughs> I just wanted to push it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those ones. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when I met these people, they said, yeah, we've got this amazing new park. Uh, it's called Wanyi Park. You should go there this summer. They have a lift. They have jumps. So that's exactly what I did that summer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was so much fun. So I went there. You weren't there, unfortunately, but I think Martin was there, Jerome. And I was just still on that skateboard. Well, basically an oversized skateboard, Lane Canyon. And they gave me these uh, inner tubes from bikes so I can get some heel straps on there. Yeah. <laughs> I got all the stuff with heel straps on. And I was trying fives on this tiny, tiny wooden brand. And that's all I did. All I wanted to do was progress. Oh, man. Yeah, that must have been like 2005. Yeah, I wasn't there at that time. I think I saw you the last time in 2005. Must have been like the last session of the season or something that I saw you there. Because before that, I, I wasn't in the country. So, mm -hmm. so I, I assume <clears throat> if you're going from, you know, meeting Arno and, and one new park there, and that, you, you must have been involved online with meeting people on that. So was... Um, what were your, was what was your go-to forum back in the day? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I still have this little folder with all these old mountain board videos, 2005 and 2006 from all over the world. So I've got all AJ's videos here. I've got a Kony Kama's video. I got the best of 2005 AT, AT Borders, the World Championship of AT Borders 2005. Yeah, I got some New Zealand videos, some Japan videos. But that's all I was doing. And back then, I was writing that wooden jump. And somebody once posted, like, "Oh, somebody show me how to do a three sixty shifty shifty." And I just learned them. I was like, "Ah, oh, I want to post it, but I want it to be perfect." So I was the kind of kid that wasn't really interacting a lot with everybody. I was just waiting for like perfect videos that I never got. <laughs> <laughs> Watching from the sideline, right? Are they yeah. picking these tricks off? All right, oh, that's what yeah. they do. need to be doing that, but never showing anybody. <laughs> yep, basically that. I, I was either too embarrassed or I just really wanted to show something perfect, and it was never perfect. It never is. That that search for perfection still goes on, eh? It still goes on. I think that's one yeah. of the that makes that makes these board sports so enjoyable. Mm -hmm. in, and and the funny thing is as well what you see you know if you're trying to do a perfect trick whatever that may be or it, it can be down to even just as simple as a power slide or a slash or something like that what you do in your body at that moment mm -hmm. is not necessarily what it looks like from the third person perspective so when you go back and analyze you know watch the video replays of yourself doing it's like oh, i thought i stumped that or, you know and it, it looks lame You're like oh. <laughs> the frustration oh yeah oh yeah oh man yeah that, that's basically how i started but i also have to say that i have lovely parents who took me to the demo who took me to one park even before I went to Wanyi Park, we went to, what's that old slope called, Arno? Where well, like, which one? The, the uh, one with the double uh, ski uh, lift? Uh, what? Trop yeah, Trapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we even went there once. and It was still, it was already closed down, but I was like, trying to write something on there. So everywhere they took me, I just took the board. So we went to the south of Spain. I took the board with me. We went to France. Everywhere where I could, I was writing the board. I was so addicted. <laughs> it does it it does it to us all it doesn't mm -hmm. it's why we're all bloody still here 20 odd years later still doing it <laughs> i started writing out with some people but they never got the bug as much as i did so 
it was very nice riding with them. It was very nice progressing with them, but it looks like I'm uh, I'm the last person standing out here. Well, no, you're not. I mean, <laughs> around here, like close. <laughs> <laughs> not a two hour drive close. Well, I mean, that that's that's kind of an interesting question. Like, how do you, how do you mm -hmm. how do you stay motivated? How to to ride you know in the modern day because yes, there's not been a, a massive community from holland as such over the years there have been a few people like like you say um and arno's obviously been quite close to you how, how, what's the sort of distance between you guys over the years i mean it's probably changed as you've moved about but yeah it changed We're usually like two ish hours yeah something like that Oh, that's pretty nice then. So it's not not the end of the world to be able to ride with each other, eh? No, definitely. I mean, we definitely meet up more than we ride together. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> it went from looking at this guy doing amazing tricks, then meeting him at a contest in France randomly. Um, and that's oh. becoming friends. Dude, I still have, like, I just went to... Um... LA Mountain Boat Park. I just got back from it and I was hanging out with Mael and we were talking about like this competition at Loge de Garde. And I pulled up some pictures from it and you're still on it with your little baby face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was amazing. That was amazing. Yeah. That was like the first real summer into like bomb right into the scene, I feel like. That was yeah, well, a great place, Lodge de Garde. Yeah. Oh, man. So this is kind of a funny story because I, I just, I was 17 back then. I was just riding the MBS board still with the plastic hubs. And my sponsor, 4.7 back then, uh, shout out to Arden because he really told me a lot in the profession. You'd have to get me a ton of these plastic hubs. Like I'd always break them. I'd do like a 270 and you just go straight through the hubs. <laughs> but still, we, we managed to ride with those things. So I was 17 back then. I had that board. And I was in the south of France with my parents. And my dad actually had to drive, I think it was five, six hours from the south of France. Dropped me off at a campsite, random campsite. He pulled up met these people and he's like oh yeah my son really wants to enter the contest i'm gonna go drive back to uh my family in the south of france can you keep an eye on him and the guy's like yeah, sure sure i mean you're at the, the campground which was at the bottom so you have to drive up every day to go right but sure we'll make sure he gets along and i just got back from a french camp like french language camp so i was able to, to talk with him which is fine and that guy turned out to be Ludo. No way. Yeah. So the first person we talked to there. Yeah. Ludo. Yeah. Yeah. No way. This was 2006, <laughs> I want to say. Uh, so put up my tent there. Then went up. And these random Belgians, Arno, Rudy, and Hildekin. And yeah. My, my day. <laughs> I was like. Oh, I thought I was going to be here alone. Then Arnold shows up. AJ Lawson is there. We've got two nets. We got True. Paul Paul, I think it was. Yeah. I don't think Oleg was there. No, Oleg wasn't there. Ted no, was, it was Paul Paul. Yeah. Um, the Brazilian girl. Yeah. And um, the, the Russian girl. Oh. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> hmm. like that was um, that was so nice. And just before going, I did call Diego, so I did let Diego know that I was I was going there on my way, and he assured my family that everything was going to be fine. Um, but yeah, when I just arrived there, I didn't know how much I could ride because I think the week before. I was riding the Henk Mountain Boat Park. I don't know if you ever heard of that one. No. It was close to the south of Holland. And it's just this one slope, super, super steep. And at the end, you have a quarter pipe. And I thought it was cool to try to sit on the quarter pipe. 
and it was kind of cool, but it wasn't as cool as going all the way behind through the little gate that was there. It's time I'm magically passing it on my mountain board and falling three meters down. So what? <laughs> <Yeah. Nah. laughs> oh, God. It was really like a three meter high quarter pie. There's this little plateau and then the gate and there are these metal things going up. And I somehow managed to miss them with my wheels while going backwards, fall down onto my head. But yeah, I was a little injured. <laughs> yeah, I was there for a week. So, and being 17, you're able to recover, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I it, 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 the ambulance called. No, 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 no. It was yeah. just one of those things where you hurt yourself, where you're just like, you're fine. You're fine. How? Eventually, you're fine. But <laughs> I wasn't able to ride the first couple of days, but then started riding there, and they had an airbag, which was amazing to try the tricks again. I had this, I thought it was a massive big air. Do you remember that one, Arno? Yes. It, was it hurt. <laughs> How did the, the, no, that was the first time. The second time was a bigger one, right? Yeah, this is the, the first time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun, but back then I was scared. I was scared. And uh, a little bit no secret about me is I don't like speed. So I always <laughs> try to go, like, if I think I'm ready for speed or for the jump, I go down a meter and then drop in because I think oh, going a little bit less speed is a little, little bit scary. So I, I knuckled that jump constantly. So of course, within the contest, I was not able to do anything. I didn't qualify, but I had the best time with everybody. And yeah. seeing AJ ride, AJ Lawson was always an inspiration. Watching all his videos and just seeing him do front flip sevens, it was just yeah, boy was on fire back then. Still is, but he was really in good shape, like showing off there. <laughs> well, he done a couple of uh, stints. With Ted over at Trampoline, he did two two summers, didn't he? Back to back. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, two thousand five and two thousand six. That's it. Come over to to France where with the Compian up the uh, Lodge de Guard trip and that, and stopped in Courchevel as well. With, uh, mm -hmm. One and yeah, he he was on fire around that time. It was kind of kind of peak. Not. I don't want to say peak AJ because he's still on fire these days. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. He hasn't changed. But no, <laughs> but he was, he was, what's the word? He was a bit groundbreaking. Do you know, Sorry. like he, he was going for the tens early on. Uh, I remember seeing him try to do backflip to 50, 50 on, uh, on the flat. Oh, deck. Shit. Yeah, no. that, one, that one stayed with me for a long time. That's yeah. how it motivated as well. Seeing that you're like, I want to be able to do that. I want to get there. Yeah. yeah. Seeing Tom ride, seeing Arna ride, it's just, those are the things that for me were leading in, okay, I want to put more effort in. I want to actually try things. Yeah. I got to inspire the next generation. That's the key, isn't it? <laughs> and the weird thing is, I would never consider myself to do the same thing. But, there are some kids riding around now who say, like, yeah, I'm going to do this trick because of you. Do you remember at the World Cup that somebody did a front flip off the Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. yeah. That like, was... yeah, I'm going to do this one for you. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> What's his name again? Oh, I want to say Seaman, but it's not Seaman. Julian? Dylan. Oh, th yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, they'll do it. Well, not so little anymore. Nope. <laughs> but I mean, it brings us that that time was also the time when when you came over for the BFC. Um, so year after, yeah, year after, um, and those those videos mm -hmm. that have been in then are still quoted like like Eamon and Emlyn. Essentially, they're what, what generation below below you, aren't they? Uh, 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 or maybe even two generations below, um, but they're 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 finding the inspiration from those those movies when they were were coming up through. 
Um, and well, just to see is all back still doing it today, albeit a little bit maybe more cautiously at times, potentially. Although I think you're right, we do need to keep make sure we don't drop that extra meter down the hill because knuckles are way worse than actually landing the jump proper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somehow my mind always thinks, okay, speed scary, but yeah, uh, it also depends if my switch is on or not. Because I think I do have some kind of switch where when it's on, it's like, okay, doesn't matter. Yeah. We're just going to go. <laughs> Speed is your friend. Yeah. When the switch is on, yeah. But when it's not on yet, then I need one big crash to know, like, okay, I'm going to be fine. And then. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, some that is true, by the way. Like, sometimes a good crash can get you into the right um, state of mind to go to throw down. Because... Yeah. I notice that sometimes I just feel like, okay, I need to sketch out on a jump and slide out and I'll be fine afterwards. Uh, yeah. 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 It really I think helps it sometimes. Hurt yourself during or hurt yourself too badly that it's, you know, that it doesn't hinder you going forward. Then you're right. Like when I, when I slammed out the start gates at the border cross there. Thanks for that one. I hear about that one. Never been so embarrassed in my life. I've never done. Well, I, I still can't figure out what exactly happened. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't hurt myself, and I got back up, got myself back up, got my head together, and just right, okay, like I, 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 I can do this. You know, it's just one of them things. Yeah. It's the same. It, it translates exactly across to freestyle or anything. Just yeah, it's like it. That's that's the way I think. If you do like a trick, you slide out, and you're like. Well, I'm good. Okay, let's go. Yeah, it's like it's like, like a little slam. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's like telling your body, like, see, that wasn't that bad. You can take better. You can take worse. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost just slip up there. Your words. <laughs> 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 Why do you have to point that out? <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, we've got a. We might as well tackle the the topic as such whilst we're here, because it's not always the thing that some we like to take the odd tumble every now and again. If it helps motivate us, that's great. But mm -hmm. you, you have had a few injuries over the years, haven't you? I've been very, very dumb uh, on the first one because I was doing a snowboard contest and it was at my local fridge. So it's also the funny thing. I live... 20 30 minutes bike ride from an indoor ski slope and i wanted to snowboard in summer and somehow i chose to mountain board over the snowboard fast forward to so like i was 18 19 and back when you're a student you can get these discount passes so i was there a lot i just rode constantly on my snowboard there and every tuesday i had this local skateboard shop had a contest and you can get goodies so like a t-shirt or a a bag or something and they would put all these reels up there different jumps they would style the, the slope in a certain way that was cool and they had this up reel and they said the first person to front flip the up reel gets the bag and me trying to prove myself already did like a back cork five that i just learned in uh, in the uk after the bfc trip so just had the bfc trip i was like okay i learned so many new tricks and I, they translated into snowboard so i already did back cork five um, I had a bunch of other things. I was like, ah, I'll do this front flip. No problem. The only problem was that it was super flat afterwards. So I did the front flip. I landed it, and my knee gave out. And that should have been warning enough. But a week later, we had a shoot for a commercial. And this commercial was for the Dutch version of MTV. And it was about split the risk, like look at all the risks. And they wanted mountain boarding in there. They wanted snowboarding in there. So from Mount Tomorrow, they went to me and they said to us, you can only go to one location. We combine it with mountain biking. So we had this random slope full of leaves in the woods. Mm -hmm. We put a jump there. I was like, well, this is my, I need to do this. This is for me. A week later, trying to stretch the knee, trying to bend as much as I could, still hurting. And of course, I still tried to ride. The first jump I do, I land. And the ACL gives up. So 
uh, that was a, a big, big bummer. And that took me about two years to recover and three surgeries. Rah. But that also makes me so much different in my decisions because we were talking at the world championships and I decided not to ride because my left knee had some issues. I wrote a little bit too much, asked a little bit too much of my body. And this moment in time just sticks with me. Like, okay, you can either try to be the hero and try to get all of the fame, or you can just be reasonable and be able to support doing any sports in the next few years. Yeah. So, yeah, that one stayed with me for a long time, but also gave me a lot of motivation to, to yeah. write more afterwards. Well, that's it. We want, we want to be around for a long time, not just a good time. Okay. You know, like, right. I've done 20 years in the game now. Mm -hmm. I, I might as well go for another 20 if we can, eh? Hey? Yeah, perfect. That's so another, he's, it's 19 for me, I think. Yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah, that one was a big bummer. And then, like, the odd, I mean, my ribs kind of sucked, but that was just bad luck. And, and your neck. It was very bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> during, um, was it during COVID or just after COVID? We went to Compiègne. Oh, I think 2021. It's just after, yeah. And everything just opened up. I wasn't able to ride a lot here because I didn't have the jumps or anything. So everything felt a little bit new again. You know, those first session after a couple of months, it just isn't all there. So we're riding Compiègne, and I've always been scared of that part. It's just big, there's big consequences. So after riding a little bit, I wanted to test out my new jump in front of the phone pit. And they have these lovely long rubber mats so I put my jump there, I put the rubber mat on there. But the thing I didn't know is if there is, if it's not completely flat, if there's a little crease in there, and you ride into that one, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it stops your wheels. So I drop in from the rolling. My board just stops before I even hit the, the jump. I fly over the jump, hit a wooden pole right here, and my shoulder just does. <laughs> <laughs> so bad luck like, whoever thought that riding a foam pit gets your hurt that bad yeah and then magically it just pops in again and after like taking it easy for a little bit luckily it's fine and it didn't come out afterwards again so i try to work out as much as i can on the shoulder to keep it strong but freak acts like that do happen and they happen at moments where you, you don't expect it of course. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I thought that was just super funny. Just getting back after COVID, after not writing a lot, and I ran into the pole of the phone bit, and then my shoulder popped up. Oh. Here you go. Just won the World Freestyle Championship two years before. Just a complete new yeah. look. Hurting myself. <laughs> nice little segue there into your World Freestyle Championships. So how many times? How many? How many times have you won it? Once, just the once, and but you see so that was. But you held it. You held it for how many years? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm the longest one. The one that hold it the longest because I don't know when it was from the UK until Moscow, but that also was a couple of years. Right. Yeah, it took, it took four years. Nice. In a very wise decision. Just to know when my limits are. Where. Yeah. I think, like I say, it was absolutely amazing to see you. We, saw, uh, our, we got a glimpse of this summer, the, how good this summer was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, on the year when you uh, just randomly showed up at the BFC Dream Tees um, event. And, I mean, that didn't go down. <laughs> that didn't go too well. It was no, one of the you're not riding for a couple of years after you're just having a surgery it just you have to eat into it a little bit i think that uh, wasn't easy <laughs> well it would have been but the a uh, board malfunction uh, you know yeah it wasn't a lot. i also noticed on myself i wasn't completely steady on the board i wasn't too comfortable yet right all right fair well, enough well, but then we got there well it was it was certainly incredible 
absolutely incredible to see is like i mean i've had my own hiatus from the sport with family and you know geographic location i understand with that i mean thankfully i'm motivated to fuck these days hence why i'm still doing this every day in and day out or week in week out but um yeah it was it was just an absolute dream to to have you back on on the hill um short-lived though it was um you know, you took that that hefty knock to the to the head, and yeah, went you off. But straight back in at the world champs, it might have been more, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it was great to see you there. Um, you had, you had a little ride there, didn't you? But I don't think did you did you fully you did uh, the world champs this year. Yeah, I qualified, so um, I was riding a little bit iffy the whole day and then I decided to drop from the top so I I did the north shore, did a back three on it did a front three on the big jump and a back cork seven on the last jump um, and then got a judged one which was a 180 to switch 180 to three the back cork seven and then I was like okay my knee needs to rest because my knee was already a little bit uh, tired from everything mm-hmm and then decided not to write the finals because I was going to the US next week. Well, this is it. And you lead you you lead yourself on in segues through to the next topics of discussion really well, Ed, Nikki. <laughs> I can't. I know, because I just my mind wanders constantly. So. <laughs> and there's so many things like I went through the timeline and I just noticed I've had so many adventures in the sport together with Arno as well. We've done so much. And it's just an incredible blessing that has been enriching my life for so long. Well, before, yeah, yeah. before we talk about the US Open, let's, we're, we're looking at the time. Yeah, we've got time. What's your favorite memories of each other? Because like, I've got some great ones of slogs and many, and Steve. <laughs> we, I've got a few riders in the UK scene that are really close to me. You've got some, some cracking memories. But is there any sort of particular road trips that you just think, oh, man, we were peaking at that po- that moment. I mean, Japan, Japan was definitely one of the peaking ones. Yeah, Japan, yeah. definitely. And I then Moscow. Yeah, yeah, Moscow second. Moscow second, because that was definitely like, oh, you've got ADD. Hey, I've got the same. <laughs> <laughs> how, how about we drink some energy drinks and go fucking crazy? Oh, Disappear for two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, was, that was amazing. Serbia is always serious. Yeah. Yeah, any Serbian trip. That yeah. as well. But Japan is definitely, like, for me, is definitely the most memorable one. Oh, sure. Are it was super think- weird because we were there for two weeks, I think. A bit longer. Yeah. We were supposed to be there for, like, for two weeks, but we, oops, we missed booked our ticket. <laughs> So we arrived like a week before the event. Yeah. yeah. Like I arrived like a day or yeah, a day before you arrived. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we've done, what was it? Um, Tanabe, then drove down to Kyoto, I think. Then met up with the guys in uh, Fukuoka. Was it Fujinoka? Was it? Uh, Fujinami, yeah. no, but yeah, whatever, like that village. Um, hung around and then spent another week in Tokyo afterwards, didn't we? I think we've done three weeks. Yes, another week. I was like, oh, I might fly out to like Okinawa to do something beautiful, and then we just ended up in Tokyo the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> drinking and eating. Yeah, having a very good party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was amazing. I can imagine. Middle of nowhere in Japan. Yeah, any- I have videos of this this lush green slope that Arno was just beeline in. It was incredible. How 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 did they receive you at the airport? Because for me, I had these three Japanese people that I've never met before. Uh, I that barely spoke a word of English. Were amazing to me because do you know all those language apps like Duolingo? I, I started using those. So I, I arrived there and I was like, uh, 
And they're just like, they're <laughs> back to super soaked. And we just sat in the car for three hours and trying to make sense of any conversation, which was uh, <laughs> very cool being in, in such a country and seeing, seeing the culture. Yeah. And then meeting this guy at the, this ski slope already. Yeah, so, well, we had my birthday party. Like, didn't really have a birthday party in Belgium. And then they heard about that and threw a birthday party for me, which was open bar, open everything. And the bar. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. That was. <laughs> yeah, I was really, we really were hosted as legends. There, yeah. which was uh, very yeah, very uh, weird right. and humbling at the same time <laughs> uh, you guys are kind of legends come on really i mean like going back earlier to you're saying about making us a, a sponsor me tape you know mm. you guys have both been around the block in that sort of world when mountain boarding was at its prime and uh you know there was some mountain not not money to earn but there was money enough to put you guys on tours and you know keep yeah. your a, a roof yeah. head and in safety and food in your belly you know on those tours and stuff like that a lot of it just through love and the community spirit don't get me wrong um but yeah there was there was what i'm saying for you is that there was a bit of a route for you guys there was um you're about as legit as it as it gets. And when ATB mag and the internet was kicking off in the mid 2000s, you know, that ability to become known on the other side of the world through a shared passion mm -hmm. that on in boarding was there. And and the, the Japanese I that I've never been there, but they have this, they seem to have this sort of culture that that amplifies that sort of Hundred percent, and like it's. Yeah. Uh, I just when people ask about my sport, all I say is that for me, it's a cheap way to travel. You're able to sleep on people's couches. You might still have to pay for the flight. You might still have to pay for some things, but it's so much cheaper and it's so much more being involved in a country, getting to really know a country, getting to really know the people, than it is as just yeah, booking booking a holiday. Yeah, definitely. It's like they say about skateboarding as well, but with mountain boarding, it's even more so because the community is smaller, but you can travel anywhere in the world, hold a mountain board, and you probably find a place to stay in every country because there will be a rider. It's just we don't know him yet. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm actually in Arno's room right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. London. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I got a two person bed here for all my friends that come over. So Cody slept here, Arno slept here. There's more than another yeah. person that you survived with a lot crashed here. So that's what I love about it. Just having this space here to get people to come hang out. Because in the end, of course, I love the sport, but I come to love the people. I don't know if I want to say I love them more. And maybe I really do. Yeah. It is yeah, like it's so nice. Everybody's so nice. And we all have the same stupid humor. Like it doesn't matter where where we're from. Yeah. Um. Just I just went to like um, LA mountain board park uh, with a UK friend who's never been to any mountain boarding or anything, and she was like, "Hey, these guys, they're just as stupid as you, <laughs> but in a good way." <laughs> it's just like, yeah, we we pretty much have the same stupid idea of what's funny and what's not, and um yeah it's 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 weird it, it really binds us together i find like we all have the same that's it uh, you, mindset yeah and if you don't usually they're out of the scene within a year yeah yeah you yeah. really quick mind you're like okay maybe your vibe isn't completely as it is they're not getting bullied away but you just know that okay then they they probably won't stick around yeah, yeah. The seven, well i suppose it, what is it all the we have the great as mountain boarders we have the grace of eagles and the speed of cheetahs, but the instincts of a lemming. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah there's definitely something in that. But your latest travels, like we just touched on there. I'm just looking at mm-hmm. the top. Um, you, you've had a nice old jolly over to, to the US for the Open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, spoiler here, we were hoping to do a bit of a roundup, but I'm a bit shit at organising multiple different time zones and stuff like that and obviously that makes it more difficult so we haven't had that yet but maybe at some point in the future we'll have a uh, the us open sort of review but mm-hmm. it went all right for you there didn't it it was fun it was really fun like i said my knee was still struggling a little bit and having to travel to montreal stay there overnight and then go to the us also didn't help resting it but i noticed every day i felt more comfortable more and more comfortable so I only brought my deck over, which is actually was in uh, Matt Brin's board bag because I asked him to bring it over. So there they put on some old Matrix 2s, some old wheels with, I think, kind of rusty bearings, but all good. And just just rode that thing around. It was, it was, it was fun. It's, that track is so much fun. You guys really have to go. It's definitely worth it. And just the whole vibe they have there. Just the vast amount of land and the nicest people. It's it's worth worth the trip. Uh, and I've been to the US like, since 2010. That was the first trip I did with Dylan, where we rode uh, a demo in California. I went back the next year, flew into Colorado, drove all the way up to Washington State to do a demo, drove all the way back. And then third time was when I was living in Montreal. I did Moab, I did California with uh, Cody Stewart. And what did I do like um, film on Bike Park in Colorado. So I've, I've been around the US scene a little bit. But being back there and seeing people like Jason Lee was incredible. Just hanging out with Evan again. Evan Carlson, I hadn't seen him in a while. Now an amazing dad with two kids. And meeting the new people like Brennan Good, who is just amazing. So it's nice to see what's going on there and nice to check in with the people back there. And like I said, what they did with the whole course there is worth a visit. I'd argue maybe a world champs there. It looks really fun to ride. Um, it, it that step down looks gnarly, though. That uh, looks step like down a proper more. step down. Oh, step okay. down was, yeah. Up, uh, more up the track was a little bit gnarlier, but that was fine. Okay. Was <laughs> and then <laughs> seeing Jason. Jason's 20 years older than I am. Seeing him slashing around, riding that thing was just inspiring. So inspiring. He's still got the moves. He's still got the moves. He's got he's just the finesse on him. <laughs> Jason <laughs> ain't Kips Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so the border cross was nice, actually wasn't too keen on racing, but then the flip gets switched on. I'm like, okay, we're doing this. So I was racing the whole time. And um at one moment, hi local guy from there super super fast and i mentioned the rusty bearings before because i noticed that on the corners and jumps i was fine but on the flats i seemed to lose a little bit of speed so ty being second out of the gate gained up on me so we're right in the finals right and after that step down you said arno it's this massive burn to the right which goes into a massive burn on the left so I had this amazing idea to catch the inner line. So he was like, I'm on your ass. I'm on your ass. He gets the inner line, loses balance, and bam, hits my back, uh, my back wheels at maximum speed. So I was second. My brain was first. It was way, way too quick. We both crashed. And then Evan Carlson just chilled, did some grabs. I was like, oh, wait, they both crashed. So he just drove fastest, got second place. I got the, I got unfortunately got fourth place. I really want to tie to get nice and nice pick uh like a second place or a third place. But yeah. I think he got quickest time on the hill, did he not? From... No, no. Uh, no tie. Tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I so, got time on the hill. 
uh, an accolade in its own right, but never really gets a medal or anything like that. I, I always so solid on there, and boy, he's from there, so he knows the track. Yeah, but he got the fastest time. So that was amazing with the border cross. Uh, the freestyle was the next day, and with my knee feeling kind of all right, I was able to do some things there. So that was cool, and just to like give a little bit of a shell with Matt and with Brandon Good. We tried a Superman. You tried a Superman? He tried to no Brandon Good did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that was that's one of the weirdest tricks I've ever seen. And I never thought people would actually try it on dirt, but he's was just it, uh, the early grabbing it. Oh yeah. yeah. I was it at the at the the, 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 the world freeze styles. Um yeah. Western. Was it was it Sansone? Did he land that? I've seen videos of that one. I might actually still have some videos of that one. But I don't know. Yeah. Who... Couldn't say with any certainty if... Uh, if it's if a crazy it's... trick, man. It's, it's... It is. It is. <laughs> Screw down this beast of a back four five. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Um, but yeah. They, they put some, some really fun features and we had some fun on it. Yeah. So I was, I was able to show off some things there. Just feel good. You feel good with the people. Ride a motor bike the whole time. Because uh, I'm from Holland, right? We have buildings everywhere. There you can just ride a motorbike through the woods. So that's all I did. Just <laughs> on my border on the motorbike. And the most beautiful thing that was there, um, they have these fireflies. It's, you call them fireflies? Yeah. yeah. But with luminescent. So the bike didn't have any lights on. And going from the campsite to the track is two, three minute ride. So I wanted to go back to the campsite and then start this bike. You have to go through like a little creek. It's fine, a little bit of water. But driving down there, just having all these lights <laughs> hit you in the face, sick. And <laughs> it's just a magical, magical place. Don't like it too much. You end up like picking them out of the other end. <laughs> He likes his proteins. <laughs> I mean, next time it's the uh, eboards, right? Because that's going to be the next step. It is. I it already is. talked to Ted. Uh, we'll have to do a a little video sequence on that. So they're they're making their way around, aren't they? Uh, when mm. they get and like, well, the power there in them these days is a lot of fun. It does make going uphill as much fun as coming downhill. I have to say, um, but but yeah, there's stuff that's still nothing, nothing beats just good old fashioned mountain boarding where there's, you know, the weight. The weight is something that I don't look forward to. But then again, like you said, it's more it feels more like a motorbike than it does feel like a real mountain board. Because I rode them in France together with Dig, uh, legend by the way. Mm. It just it's so nice going through burns full speed. Yeah. I mean not not that I don't know if they still allow it. Um, but shooting up the Bugs board across track mm -hmm. causes way loads of fun. <laughs> but I don't think it's particularly good for the track. No. I mean, processions of people with zoom, 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 up them. Um but yeah, they're 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 a great commute. You know, as at a last mile option. I mean, maybe they're not the best given the size of the thing. Sure, for sure. But, just but you're on a rural commute as yeah. opposed to an urban commute. That's it. No, it ain't super big. Saying like, okay, this really gave my board life the second life. You just you're still on your board. You still get the feeling. So that, that hypes me up. Oh, without a doubt, I I owe my return to mountain boarding in, in no small part to Steve Birkbeck and him and my wife getting an electric board for me for my 40th. And, yeah, that turned it completely turned me around. I mean, immediately I went straight back out on the normal board as well. But, <laughs> but yeah, but it, it just it, it was just that spark that was needed. And. Mm -hmm. and about the community there the community 
outpour of love around my 40th when they did that it was just so immense and overwhelming that I was a grown, a blubbing grown man at the time when, you know, there's people that I haven't seen for years turn up and, you know, yeah, it was just like, where have you been my these last few years? No wonder, no wonder my head had fallen away a bit, you know, <laughs> because I didn't have you guys in my freaking life. Is that's what it is? Um, but yeah, that's enough about me. I'm just waxing lyrical and enjoying the memories. There. Well, that's that's a, that's the same thing for us. Like seeing the BFC crew again, it's it's, it's the community is just so strong and so nice. And, mm-hmm. It's it's incredible. So, oh no, as um, we as as such, are there any questions you'd like to ask your old Beza there? Well, the ones I had in mind, you already ticked off, so that's um, uh, it's going to be a difficult one. I but apo- I apologies. <laughs> <laughs> it's you've got to bring me out. You've got to bring me out. <laughs> Um. Oh, I yeah, I've got one. So Nick, are you gonna grow your afro out on uh, again once for us, please? Um, as you know, my hairstyle always changes, so probably one day. Not <laughs> now, because the next one is gonna be the next session is gonna be at Akoni's birthday. I'm thinking of why it might be nice to have short hair. And I, I won't yeah. not probably grow it out in a month. Mm, yeah okay well next year then <laughs> maybe next year who knows i like to keep guessing october, isn't he he's an october baby like myself i think a coney is that right yeah yeah yes so we're heading there on uh, the last week of september very nice that's awesome yeah, I'm, not... I'm good at i can't make it out yet on a boat on a random boat and now hanging out at his birthday with like Jeremy Lee with Cody. It's just, yeah. Gonna it's be. really nice what this, this sport has given me. Oh, without a doubt. That is true. It makes me yearn to travel again. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. you're going to have to come. Oh, I think I ruined my, I'm still there. Yeah. We're there still... you are. Uh-huh. Uh, you're going to have to come to Holland because in two weeks, yes. we have 10 year anniversary of the Mambo Park up in the north in Groningen. So, yeah, come travel, coming out. Hey, yes. I really need my wife to get into mountain boarding. So, <laughs> the whole family away. I mean, sitting in sitting in a, in, a, in a muddy field is not her idea of a pass. <laughs> I, th- I don't get it. We, well, never got that like people are like why are you doing this like why are you not doing that it's... <laughs> um, but you should you really should or anyone else because it's a really nice track um, you can get a hostel yeah. in the city center it's a really nice city yeah it's- that as well and it's just fun to write there and the people are stupidly funny as well <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maybe it, even a bit more. It, it, it's open to the public. You know, anybody can go there at any time. Anytime, just yeah. a weekend. Yeah. Or... No, you can go there anytime. Just in the weekend, they're there with the boards. So, yeah. Oh, we'll have to get some details on that and definitely make a. a trip. I did. It existed. Post T-shirt. Can you get as many mountain boards as possible? Because we definitely want people to enjoy this as much as they can. Yeah, he ride to come. It'll be fun. Yeah, oh, okay. they've got um, they've got a really nice dirt jump as well, yeah. like a really really good one, and then mm-hmm. uh, a, a smaller line with like, is it three tabletops um behind each other, and they just they flow so perfectly well. It's just fun. You yeah, just fun. you can do party laps all night. All right. I'm just trying to think, is that the, the weekend of the 30th? No, it's on yep. the 8th, I think, of September. Uh, 9th and 10th? Or yeah. 8th? Yeah. 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 Let's have a quick look. 
where's your calendar there it is um yeah so eight nine and ten so nine and ten is going to be the event um we're gonna it's going to be a pretty fun party um little barbecue um like proper mountain border party probably and then we'll see what happens because Groningen has got a pretty vibrant nightlife. <laughs> wow. Well, I doubt that I'm going to be able to make two weeks' time, but I'm going to endeavour to get over to there because that's not that's not a big distance, even for me. I don't know whether Nuki, my closest airport, which is the size of a small garden shed, <laughs> will get. <laughs> I reckon Bristol could get me to. Uh, to get me to to Amsterdam or Skip, mm -hmm. maybe. You know, it actually got me to so many events and like training in Switzerland for, like, for example, World Cup buses. Yeah, man. Majority of things that just take a bus. So when I was younger, I took an overnight bus on Friday night, go to London, Victoria, then take a train up to Red Hill and ride that park. For the World Cup, I take an overnight bus on Friday. Right, the whole day at Spills Park, which is the Airbag Park, and take a bus back the same night to save costs on a hotel and make sure that I'm fresh enough for work on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the kind of stupid vacation I had for a while. No wonder your knees started giving up. He's just sat in that position. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I gave up traveling by bus. Like, I'm way <laughs> too tall for that shit. <laughs> Maybe you took the bus to Lerge got, I think, as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out to all of those cheap bus companies, because that's what got me riding so much and keep riding. Like I said, I don't, I don't have an airbag around here. I don't think the closest Mambo Park phone is two hours from me. Arno is two hours from me. But Amsterdam is only 15 minutes. So I just go to Amsterdam, grab a bus, go ride in the UK. Yeah, I think I'm crazy doing that for a weekend, but I think it's living. I think this is what I do it for. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. As 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 a as a person without the responsibilities of children, um, yeah. then grab the world is your oyster as a mountain border. Don't be scared to travel alone. Um, it it's so rewarding. And in Switzerland, I have friends that I can see once I'm there. In UK, I went to Andy Packard to ride with him. So it's just, yeah, it's super rewarding just to get out of that comfort zone and just travel and do things. True. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I think I've I've asked all the questions that I think I had to ask, but Nick, is there, is there anything that we've glossed over? Like any periods in your uh, sort of history that we have, that are vital to, to, to your, or any crowning achievements? I mean, I was assuming, assuming getting a world champ ticket is, or. or is yeah, that was, that was wild. That, I really worked my ass up for that. Um, it was, I mean, it started a little bit in Moscow at the first world champ. No, the first world championship I went to was actually Swambuck. But I was way, way too inexperienced to ride that. I think I rode the jumps once or twice. And then Arno won, legend. Yeah. Hey. After, <laughs> after that, it was Moscow, the first one. And I trained a lot. I actually went to Compiègne a lot to train in that foam pit. And did, I tried weird tricks. I was, Tried a, what was it? A switch back nine, a cap seven switch front flip. I was only able to land in the switch front flip, the front seven. Got fourth, super happy. And then in Compiègne in the World Cup, that was just, I started going at it, got second. I was like, okay, I want to get closer, closer, closer. Got to Slovenia. And that's where I broke my ribs. So unfortunately, that didn't happen. And it must have been the year after that, right? The 
And the year after that was Compiègne again, and then you. But that was wasn't that was that the World Champs, Compiègne back then. As I recall it, it was Moscow, Compiègne, then uh, Slovenia. Afterwards, Poland. Not this one. Okay. Yeah. But in Poland, everything just connected. Like I said, I was going to Switzerland often. Just the weekends that I could, I just go in there, and I just got tricks dialed. And luckily, so the thing that helped me a lot, first of all, is reggae. I was just listening, bumping reggae the whole time, just chilling. Um, they started off with a real gem, and that's one of my strengths. So I was able to get high points in that one. And just warming up for the finals and the jumps, I did a line which was like a, what was it? A front rodeo to a cap seven to a switchback set core five. And I was like, okay, I'm good. And then the gem started. Wasn't I able to put that run back down again, unfortunately, but I put down some solid runs. And all I was thinking is, damn, this reggae is good. And whatever happens, I'm going to be at work on Monday. No, nothing's worth getting upset over or just, just chill, just enjoy. So that's how everything came together. And that's also why this time was also easy just not to write the finals, just knowing that it's, it feels amazing to achieve something. It is great and putting something down that challenges your ability that makes you go is great. But being able to write the next time and write a lot is so much nicer. Yeah, that's um that's something that's like I was really proud when you won uh the the title in Poland because uh we've been talking beforehand and um during the years you've always had the same pattern where you wanted it too much and you were putting so much pressure on yourself that you were like um you couldn't perform as you normally do when you're just like playing around just hanging out or doing a show or whatever just uh without any pressure the moment you you put yourself to some pressure you've always been um like not failing but just just too stressed about it and too tense yeah. why and that's why you couldn't land some tricks and all that stuff and it would work in your head and you could tell like it was always just a battle against your head mm -hmm. Poland you were like completely completely like mellowed um and i wasn't there but i was screaming um at the screen and then because i was following i don't remember whose live stream it was but i was following a live stream um and then you hit your head and the live stream quit <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i was texting him you and like nobody nobody responded and then afterwards i heard that you won i was like fuck yeah he won this it's amazing. I, I almost jumped up in the air when I when I heard the news. But then, actually, the point, the moment I'm more proud of you is this year you pulling out of the competition because you were like, "There's no point. There's really no like. I I, I want to ride in the US. I want to be riding better afterwards. I, I better just give my knee the rest. Like I've got the title already. I don't need to defend this. I've got it." And I've had it longer than anyone else because you have, because I just did the maths. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The longer was the longest it was um, between two world championships is three years. Yeah. So you've had it four. So yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to put that out there because that is really something that has always been an issue for, for Nick was just like to, um, putting so much pressure on like performing, performing, performing whilst he was performing already. Like everybody, everybody was like, fuck, he's writing so dope. Shame that he's in his head, like pushing himself too hard. Mm. Um, and that is something that I've noticed for myself this year as well. It's really mindset. There's so much like how you approach anything in life really works getting all philosophical here, but um, how you, approach competition or even just getting a trick done is really like you can put yourself through so much pressure and you won't enjoy it might as well just enjoy it and if it's not if it's not today i'll just make sure there's another day 
that's what you have to aim for. We, I'm getting old. You're getting old. Um, our bodies are very old. Uh, so I think that is the main goal. Try to keep riding as good as possible, I guess. That's it. And we'll always have the stories. That's it. Yep. Definitely. Keep it, keep it fun. That's what it's all and about. And I have one one last story that is always in my 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 head. Um, so one of the things when I noticed like Arna says I get into my head, right? If I'm at Wangy Park and I started just going from the top, just doing these curves, just turning around on the board, going down, it feels so nice. It feels so much nicer than doing a really sick jump. And you just like Everything clears out. You're like, hey, wait, I'm smiling. I'm enjoying this. Mm -hmm. Instead of being too tense to try something. On the other hand, yes. like Wendy Park has been one of my stomping grounds to to progress. And I think this was before the Slovenian World Championship. I was there training a little bit. And I do these weird things in my head where I'm like, okay, if I do a backflip on this one, I do a backflip on this one, I do a bigger trick on, on the third jump, right? So I was at one knee part, just wearing a helmet, uh, just wearing the pads I need to wear. No back protector, which I should have. I was like, wait, hmm, I've been going to this airbag for a long time. I've had double backflips pretty well. So I was riding alone. There was a little lesson class there. And somehow it was 11 o'clock in the morning. It was like, well, it's going to get hot soon. You know what? Maybe if I do a backflip and a backflip, I'll try a double on the big jump. It adds up. <laughs> it adds up. So I drop it. And there, there's some people hanging out. If you know when you park on the top, there's some benches. People look down the slope. I drop down. I do a backflip. I do another backflip. Pump. I'm like, okay. And I throw this massive double back on the one knee big air. Land bolts, completely chill, and right off. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell just happened? <laughs> so whenever you're like, okay, I want to perform, I want to do something cool. I just try it like a double black, just just riding by myself, which kids don't do. Always make sure that there's somebody there that can help you if something goes wrong. But <laughs> yep, <laughs> that was. I think that's one of my favorite memories writing by myself is doing something you work for so long challenging yourself it's like okay i guess that worked out i have um whilst uh we've been sitting there um and going through it last bit i thought of one th topic that we hadn't discussed at all uh in the previous bits and that's uh the venom platypus yeah, yeah. That's big uh, to board. Like, yeah, that's the big thing that we should uh, got them their name mm -hmm. board. You yeah. know, Jason, Leon, Jeremy, and, and so on, David, and that. <clears throat> and AJ more recently, we talked about him. You know, there's there's a guy who's waited for for years to to get it as such. But that is a your platypus model i gotta say ha hands off I, i've never ridden one mm -hmm. visual perspective or oh, that's the ball the ball noses on them it's, it's why i like the deal the new dw as well it's got that sort of like squared off nose my original board is under there somewhere but it was oh, a whole eye line board oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. it had that squared ball nose and i think I, I just can't get past it. I, I love that. I, it must be an affinity back to my first board. But how how did that come about? You, you know. So I rode from yes for a long time. So it started in 2006, just after La Loge de Garde. I went to Belgium, met uh, AJ Watkins, talked to him for a little bit, showed them, okay, I'm, I'm really serious about this. So I want to do something. So I got put on MBS. For a long time. But in 2014, I moved to Montreal and everything was just like Joe Corral was not able to write a lot. And I just noticed a little bit less support, which doesn't mean they did anything bad, but I just noticed it was just a little bit less communication, less support. So when I came back from Montreal, 
Uh, I just did a MBS trip in the U.S., which is nice, seeing Jason, writing with everybody. So it's nothing but love for MBS. I got back, and then I realized, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll just try other boards. I don't feel like I'm that connected anymore. I don't feel like um, I get a board a year or whatever board when I need. And then I saw that Venom was making these boards. It's like, cool. I don't know anything. I'll just try that board. So I brought the Black Mamba. Mm -hmm. And I was writing that in Slovenia for the first time. I liked it, but I thought it could use a little bit of an upgrade, like a little bit bigger. So I was talking to the owner and he was like, you know what? I can make you a board. I can make you a shape. I'm like, cool. What kind of graphic do you want? So I grabbed, so my graphic is basically all these photos I have from all over the world. So from Moab to Kenyan lens, where I was with B. Joe and Benton, uh, I put a BFC photo in there. I put these little uh, secret notes. So there's an A in there for Arno. There's a W in there for when you park. There's a G for graffiti supply, which is my old sponsor. Uh, so I made that graphic and then he was like, yeah. Here you go. Here you have it. Here you have a pro model. And the first one he made was just spot on, just the perfect flex. And it's the board I'm still writing today. That's basically how it came out. It's just, I talked to him once about one of his boards, then thought, okay, I'd like this and this. If you make a different one, he just made it. It's that simple. Big shout outs to Venom. He's still putting out boards as well, I believe, or no? No. no? I've, heard uh that there's no new boards last time i checked in with him he's just chilling on the canary islands and just living his life mm -hmm. it's amazing but that was just incredible having your name on a board and having all that done so yeah really big shout out yeah i i like to say i'd mm. like it it's a shame it's a shame they can't be bought because it would be a great one to have in the in the museum as such uh, yeah yeah i still have one brand new so i have the graphic which is super nice uh, maybe maybe one day we can persuade him to do a reissue we could we could <laughs> yeah on the other hand my friend phil from hero boards also is just been doing a lot of things with the board so i definitely support that oh uh, yes, yes. I have every board here. I've got Phil's boards, I've got the MBS ones, I've got the Venom ones. But somehow the Venom just talks to me. It's just a little bit uh, low feels. Feels more like a snowboard to me. But you don't have a collab, so I don't have a collab, no. That's right. But I did write your collab at a demo. True. Yeah. <laughs> they're nice. Not for me, but they're nice. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe one day I'll keep my eye on Facebook Marketplace and maybe one day I'll spot an all all shining beacon of light being a platypus <laughs> and <a> blue and black. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I really can't think of anything else that I, you know, we could sit here and chat shit for hours as we... I imagine we could. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it, for the sakes of the, the viewers and us just rambling on as such, um, Arno, if there's anything else you want to add, or or Nikki, now is the time to do so. Um, I mean, I'll leave I the to Nick. The most out of this, these next few years, so there's these, still these dream destinations where I want to go to. I want to go to South Africa. I've been invited every year, but somehow the date never ends up matching with when I can. I want to go to Brazil, and I want to do that with a lot of friends. I want to just hang out with my buddies as much as we, our buddies will still allow us to to push, either push limits or just stay there. Well, yeah, 2025, mm -hmm. I'm already clear. I know we're, we're only 2023 at the moment, but if, yeah. my wife's 40th next year, so I've got I've got to put the focus on her. She put the focus on me for my 40th and reintroduced me to mountain board. And it's only fair that I show her the respect and put put her over mountain boarding. Yep. For the, um, uh, so I thought you were going to put her on a mountain board. <laughs> yeah, I'd like, uh, the kid, it's all, 
Suki, my daughter, my youngest one, she is mad keen, mad, mad keen. Um, so she'll definitely be in the next generation. Uh, but yeah, 2025 is already um, booked in with her and okayed. So I am, and uh, there's a bit of an invasion from the UK going over to the US in May, as was suggested by Jason when we done his episode. Um mm-hmm. So we're going to try and make it happen. Okay. Uh, the few people, um, Matt, want, uh, Matt and the brothers, Brinda, are interested, Eamon and Emlyn are, are all wanting to. We're putting it together because it is going to be an expensive trip. I mm-hmm. suppose, some way or another, uh, uh, even in just airfares alone. But flying into to Denver and doing the sort of Silk Road up through the desert to um, yeah. uh, Salt Lake City, basically. Um, right. So... If we can tie any of those in around that date, those dates, I'm thinking, I'm looking at how how, how easy is it to get to Hawaii from whilst we're over in America? <laughs> get to how much long, how many hours extra to go to Brazil on the way back, maybe? How long I can drag this out for, I don't know, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> Let me look in. I'll be, I'll be so sick. Yeah. Um... I definitely don't, don't try to miss opportunities i'd like to give to listen at home when you think about it just go do it like you go into russia for the first time i was scared i didn't know anybody there well that's i didn't know two nets but it was just to this random country i don't know their alphabet but it was one of the most amazing experiences you knew it's olga <laughs> there it is there it is that's <laughs> and right back at the start of the episode to the end <laughs> oh, that's, that's an hour long waiting for that punchline there are i'm glad i'm glad I've, I've, I've been i've been buying my lip <laughs> um, oh, but, you, you're, so, you're so right though putting yourself out out of your comfort zone is when when yeah. i flourish it really is. You know. mm-hmm. That's why I really want to make these trips happen because I don't want to go down in 10 years and look back like, oh, I wish I would have gone to South Africa to write with the guys. I wish I would have gone to Brazil. Like, yeah. I'm trying to make that happen. So I, everything in my power is to do these things, meet these amazing people. Costa Rica just popped up. I'm like, oh, it looks sick. Maybe I have to put that one on the list. Oh, that, that uh, looking incredible. Yeah. Yes, I have to take up surfing then. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. We surf together, so um, like some I'm wearing, I also surf a lot, which is try try to keep active, try to keep the body nice and healthy. Go to the gym, maybe try some yoga. Yeah. That that's been key in my later life. Yeah, mm. flex trying to keep remain flexibility and not close up. I think having us locked into bindings a mm-hmm. lot. You know, you're locked in with snowboarding and mountain boarding, and then you get that slight little rotation. And spending any amount of time yeah. in that, you know, that couple of degrees, it messes with your hips and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's something we didn't take into account back in our youth. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> not. Also, in yoga, I also said it has given me like a new leash on on how I ride. He's he's still going beast doing backflips on the biggest jumps. So just take care yeah. of your body. Take any opportunity you can to travel. Try to see you on the road. Make a lot of friends. That's the thing. Like we mentioned, the community is so inviting, so nice. So. That is true. That is definitely true. Well, look, gentlemen, I am going to thank you both for your time there, um, and really appreciate you giving up. A, a, an hour or two um for the community essentially because you know th- we've been lucky enough to have this conversation but there's you know still every week hundreds it don't sound like a lot but when you consider how small our community actually is there's still loads of people interested and wanting to know these little snippets so thank you so so much for for giving up your time there and and joining us it, it, it's always a pleasure to spend time with you both it's um, an honor thank you for inviting me <laughs> well it's taken yeah. us really long enough hasn't it to get you- <laughs> <laughs>
But yeah, James, thank you very much. Well, uh, this has pleasure been pleasure was all mine. See you guys soon. See you indeed. Yes. <laughs> Why, I man, that was dead canny as out that lake. Cheers for turning out. Listen, no, before you gan yem, didn't forget. If you want to keep getting doing with the dirty dot fun, like and subscribe. Get amongst it. Shy bands getting out. <laughs>